Hello everybody, welcome to the United Way and happy, happy new year for 2023. <coughs> Personally for the channel, I just want to tell you guys from us here, um, wish you guys all the best and hopefully things get better with you guys in all your various endeavors. And never forget that football is a sport. Uh, we come here because we have a passion of a game and also we have a club in which we love here in Manchester United. We should stop um, complicating things, you know. I mean, th this is a good fan, better fan. You don't live in the UK, you live in the UK. It's not important. It's it's like, a, it's, it's a passion. And I keep telling all of those guys who think they are so super, they are better than ordinary fans that, you know what? There used to be a guy who wanted to buy Manchester United. He's no more uh, Gaddafi. The reason why Gaddafi didn't buy Manchester United, obviously many reasons, but one of the advice they gave Gaddafi, most of you might not have heard, heard about this, was that Manchester United, you are trying to buy somebody's religion. So United, the fan base, no matter whatever you think, you have to be proud of yourself as a fan base because Manchester United has is one of the few teams with a fan, almost a billion fan base. It's not me saying it. The Glazers said that before putting the club into their sale into sales. Yeah, so this is a, a player preview game. Yeah, um, about Manchester United first game for 2023 against Bournemouth. We're hosting tomorrow on the third in Old Trafford, which uh, I feel very positive about it. I, look, I just want to ask you guys, what do you feel about it? Do you think it's a game we're going to win? Drop below. I want to get your lineup, right? Tell me your lineup. What lineup will you use? Will you change the lineup that was uh, used, uh, um, that um, Eric Ten Hag? Do you think Eric Ten Hag will change the lineup? Let me put it this way. Do you think Eric Ten Hag will change the lineup? Do you think Marcus Rashford must start, will start? Drop your comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think about this. And also tell me your scores. Are you so positive of a victory? Because, um, I am quite very pragmatic and pragmatic when it comes to Manchester United, but uh, there are some good, there are some reasons to be positive, to be honest, because as I keep telling you guys here, for those of you who have been here for long, and wait, should I stop a minute? I just want to thank you guys, all of those who have subscribed. We've had plus, I think, 30 subscriptions in the less, less than a week, which is a lot for a, a tiny channel, but... um. All you can do if you're a subscriber of this channel, please share this video. There are other fans, other areas who would love to be in the community. Yeah, we do. We do a reply to all your comments. We will be having a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, programs on the channel that you will get involved with. So make sure you just go. You know what to do. Subscribe and uh, drop your comments below, and we'll get back to you immediately. And if you're living in the UK, please, please, please. Get us to get get close to us. Uh, contact us on our socials. As I said, we're a young channel, but uh, we'll be there with or without you. Just keep that in mind. So, uh, uh, yeah. So as I said, my lineup is very simple. I think United uh, now in very positive mood. I don't think we have a complete team yet to win uh, to win something this season. I think we don't have because our team is so slim. We need we need to bring in at least two more infield players, excluding goalkeepers. You know, uh, the reason I'm saying excluding goalkeepers is because some of the fans will say, "Oh, um, uh, the goal the uh, 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 Newcastle has called back their goalkeeper who was with us, which uh, I think is not a big deal." Honestly, to the end of the season, it's not a big deal. If they, David De Gea keeps fit, it's not a big deal. And um, yeah, we have Hilton that can always replace that. We have some uh, goalkeepers that could uh, play some games who are not very irrelevant, which are irrelevant. So I always put it this way. But let's go back to the lineup. I think I'll start with David De Gea, right? David De Gea has been the, the guy for Manchester United, not this season. Or decade, I'm sorry if you have if you don't know that David De Gea, I'll say in the past decade, David De Gea has had one season that um, most of the pundits started thinking about he, he the, him leaving the team, thinking the club, thinking he has done he, he's played his role, but uh, we just realized that he hasn't done that enough. And uh, if you agree with me, since uh, we had Ten Hag as a manager at Manchester United, David De Gea has been using his legs. His distributions have been way better since when. I mean, back then during the Alex Ferguson period, you could not give De Gea. I mean, we were scared when they gave De Gea a back pass. He wasn't good with his legs. But I think he has worked with that a lot. Now, that is one of the massive criticism he has. Because, you know, football is moving to one direction. With goalkeepers are getting more and more involved. And um, if you have a team, you will always want... If you want to play a high line. That's the word. If you want to play a high line, you have to have a, dog, a goalkeeper who acts very pro, who is uh, very proactive in terms of uh, using his legs. So David Gagia is slowly getting there and and he's still young for a goalkeeper. Well, he's my goalkeeper. Two centre-backs. I will... Um, Luke Shaw was very good. 
And uh, I think uh, Luke Shaw, I will keep Luke Shaw on the bench. I think I will start with Martinez and Veran. Because Martinez, it's high time he start getting goals uh, games. Luke Shaw has done very well in centre back. I think he should wait. Send Luke Shaw will play with my, my, uh, will come in in the second half. But I will I will start with uh, Martinez and Veran on the left. I will start with uh, Tyre Malasi on the left. The right I will start also with um, uh, Harry Wambasaka, which I think he has done more or less a job. I mean, we, we, he's not Kafu. He will never be. He will always be Haru Ambasaka. He had a very good game. The thing is that this is an issue with Haru Ambasaka. If you guys have noticed, he, when we play a game which we need a lot of defensive input, he's, you will easily see him as a great player. But if we go to a team and we're playing a game which we have to be very active, let us say we have much of the ball, right? He's not that creative. He's not adventurous, let me put it this way. In terms of his game, that flexibility is in there. He can do the basics, but, you know, climbing, causing those crosses. The way he... I think something that plays against Harry Ryan Basaka is his style of play, the way he... The way he he lacks that flair as a footballer, and that's why most of you guys criticize him. But personally, I think he's an okay player for the Premier League, very s solid. And um, yeah, so he will be on my right. The whole two holding midfielders, we don't have any com complaint about this. Uh, Christensen, Christ uh, Ericsson, sorry, I said Christensen. <laughs> Ericsson was uh, not very good. Was well, not very good, very average. The game against. Uh, um, Wolverhampton Wolves, but I think I mean we don't have an alternative, so he will start with uh Casemiro, who has been the pivotal for Manchester United this season. Smash a like on this video if you think Casemiro has been the game changer because personally, I think he has. There was a year he has, I think there was a year where Bruno Fernandes came to Manchester United where the world was talking about this guy who has revolutionized Manchester United. Casemiro has done even more, and um, this will uh be um testimony for both of for all of you guys watching these videos all of you fans i mean this is not only those on the channel but worldwide because i have been talking if you look at my old videos when i had a crappy studio i have been saying that uh, manchester united will not go anywhere they have no chance if they don't get a cdm they have zero chance and now we have this guy who balances the team the cbm so uh, I just pray he doesn't get an injury. He can play for long and uh, because you, you guys know the club in which we are. So he's going to play uh, Casemiro with uh, Ericsson personally for me. And um, and the wings, Rashford goes on the left. I, I will still keep Antonio on the right. Antonio has to just be more, more creative, not necessarily dribbling often, but more creative and decisive. That's the word I will use. Playmaker 10, I will go with the Bruno Fernandez, and 9, I will go with Marshall. Marshall also didn't have a, a dapper game uh, game uh, in uh, Wolves, but I think uh, well, Marshall is the best typical 9 that we have so far, considering Cristiano is in there. And um, yeah, so that's my line now. Tell me, guys, what you guys think about this lineup. Do you think uh, you, you would have uh, choose somebody else? Would have Luke Shaw gone into uh, the position of uh, uh, Malaysia now? I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm talking about also Baltimore. They also have some issues. Yeah, um, they have some issues because they have some injuries of theirs as well, which... Uh, we know of their their main one of their their main playmaker Brooks, which is a player I, by the way uh, uh, admire, right? Uh, he he also is injured and um, and yeah. So the last time Manchester United met Broadmouth, we I think we trashed them. Yeah, it was I think it was five one or five two. When was that? was that? The last time we met Broadmouth was it was in in the league. Yeah, that was five two. That was in two thousand and twenty, and the year earlier two thousand and nineteen we lost one nil at their place at Baltimore. But in, in 2018, with Raj in the Premier League 3 1. So it has always been, it has been really an easy move for Manchester United. Uh, Baltimore, Baltimore, and uh, I think this year will not be a, a different. I think the way we need to start the game is to be very offensive. Mount pressure. If we can get a goal in the first 15, 20 minutes, the first half we can get two, get one more goal, and then it will be a killer goal where we bring our flair players to kill the game. And uh, don't... 
don't be uh, carried away by all these two games. I think the game in Wolves was more more consequential than uh, this one. We, well, the one we are playing today, we are playing tomorrow, sorry, because Manchester United, we do have uh, a lot of games. Let me just put this in perspective in the league. This is, uh, we have three more games, right? We will be playing every three days. So, so we are playing um, Bournemouth tomorrow on the third. Then we go, we come at home, uh, C C City, City comes at home. Then we go to Arsenal. So these are very top games. These are, let's put it this way. City, Arsenal. If, if, if we can beat City, that would be a massive, massive message uh, to send the Premier League. So it's very good that we take this both mod game as a game in which we are preparing against the City game. We, I mean, in terms of the drills, in terms of what Ten Hag wants, I think that's how he's going to approach the game. So, um, um, yeah, good luck to Manchester United, um, the players on the pitch, and also fingers crossed to the fans. And guys, I want to ask you guys something, guys. I want to give you guys an invitation. Whenever Manchester United is playing, come to the channel. That's where we do live content, where you can drop your questions. I'm here always to answer. We have a lot of content, uh, contents during that period. It's not all about, I don't do commentaries on the games. Yeah, we talk about the games and actions. We have... Um, uh, we have a ve some very uh, interesting uh, uh, subscribers in this channel. They might be my, uh, tiny, but very active. We have someone like Prince Odun, which is a legend in, uh, in terms of the comments here, who is, uh, I call him the timekeeper because he always alerts me about the goals. <laughs> Prince uh, Odeon. Yeah, o Augustin Odeon, I think. Yes. Um, uh, Happy New Year to you, Prince, if you watch this video. And yeah, so guys, see you tomorrow. Guys, uh, smash a like on the video. Very a good short show today. And uh, I would love to be doing live content, as I told you guys, but let's hit that 10K mark. And when we are on that 10K mark, it will be easier. So, you know, doing this live content is good if you have like 100 people minimum uh, exchanging opinions. Because the whole idea about live content is talking to you guys. It's not about me. I'm I'm fine. I can see, watch the game, analyze the way I want. But, you know, sometimes some of you come in with information who are very, uh, very fruitful for the community. Anyway, guys, thanks again. Happy New Year. We close it on that uh, note. Happy New Year. New year and hopefully like, this year will be united's positive year yeah i mean whatever what i mean the biggest positive thing we can get this year as a united fan is a team to be sold at this point i don't care to who i don't care even an enemy of mine by manchester united the glazers the name the glazers should be wiped away from this club because what i think uh, these guys have done to united where they have put united as a club has they have uh, destroyed this club soaked every i mean squeeze everything out of united as a lemon uh and uh, they don't deserve the respect to i mean by the fans honestly their father bought the club to um, had an ambition and the kids just messed it up that is my clear opinion for me personally and um, i don't know about you anyway guys yeah happy new year be with the united way follow our socials we have a facebook group uh i mean we, we are growing as a young community so uh it doesn't depend on me. It depends on us. So uh, what are you waiting? Let's join and make something work here. Talk to you soon. See you tomorrow. Ciao, ciao.